Okay, in this problem, we're looking at the given sets and we're to state if it is closed under addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, and give examples that explain our answers. So, closure. A set is closed if you can use the pieces or elements of that set under any given operation or under any specific operation and then get another element in the set. Or as some of my students have said, you're trapped in the universe if a set is closed under a certain operation. So in other words, you can't get out using that operation. You're only getting the numbers that you, or values or elements that you started with. Now that's kind of general. Let's get to some specifics. Let's start with the, I think, I think the easiest example here, the set 0, 1, and 2. Easy just because they, they actually list three elements and that's it. So is this set closed under addition? Um, the answer is no, because, for example, I could add 1 and 2. I could add those two elements, and what happens? Well, if I add 1 and I add 2, I get 3. And that's not a really big deal, except that 3 does not exist in the given universe. It's a new number outside the original set. I could have added 2 and 2 to get 4 with the same result. So this one is not closed under addition. And what about subtraction? Well, at first you might think, okay, 2 minus 1, that's 1, and, and, and 1 minus 0, that's okay. But if you reverse the order, um, in either case, you realize what you get is a negative number, right? And that is fine as well, except it's not in this universe. So it's not closed for addition or subtraction. Multiplication, well, at first glance, um, and it depends how you allow yourself to test closure, um, here, if we multiply 1 by 2, well, that's 2. Okay, so, so far it's closed, and 0 times 1 or 0 times 2 gives you 0. But if we allow ourselves, which we usually can, to multiply an element by itself, like 2 times 2, we get 4. And 4, again, that's fine, it's just not in the universe, so it's not closed for, uh, for multiplication. And for similar reasons, um, this is not closed for division. Because if we, let's say, take 1 divided by 2, right, we get 1 half. And 1 half right, is in a fraction, and we don't have that here in our universe. For, the, for those of you thinking, can we divide by 0? Well, that's undefined. So that's not really something we're testing here at all. So if you have a 0 in your set, you can't say it's not closed for division automatically just because dividing by 0 would give an undefined result. That's, that operation is not allowed to begin with. Um, of course, you could examine sets in that way, but we're not doing that here. So we can say this is um, not closed, right, for any of the operations they gave us. Now, what do we do next? Well, let's try the natural numbers. Natural numbers, um, if you look, read that roster form, right, it's the end with two lines. Roster form is just a list. Essentially, it's one and two and three and so forth, all the whole numbers. Uh, and usually we don't include zero in this set. So is this set closed at all? Well, sure, it's closed for addition, right? Any natural number plus one gives you the next natural number, and there is no largest natural number. And furthermore, if I take a large natural number like a thousand and I double it, well, I know that eventually, if I keep counting up my natural numbers, I'll reach the next natural number, right? You can't add two whole numbers and get a non-whole number, so it is closed for addition. Um, subtraction is not for similar reasons from before. If we subtract these two, we get a negative, and that number does not exist in the universe. It's not closed for division, right? Because, well, if I take one and divide it by two, I get a half, and that's not in our given set. But it is closed, right, for multiplication. If I multiply any two whole numbers, I get another whole number or natural number. Um, the only exception is that if you're looking at zero or whole numbers, um, you might interchange those two phrases, but usually whole numbers only describe zero. So sorry if I said whole numbers there. We're talking about natural numbers. So again, the natural numbers are closed for two, right? Closed for addition and multiplication, right? What about the other sets? Well, let's look at the um, odd integers over here and the last one, which is the even integers, just said, is stated in a different way. It says x this line means such that x is an even integer. We could have just said 
um, any even integer, right? Because they're saying uh, x or any value where that value is even. So what about these two sets and how are they different? Well, the odd integers, right? If we wrote that in raster form, you'd get, um, right, 1, right, negative 1, 3, negative 3, and so forth, right? So it's not even, it's odd. And here, we're lo looking to see, are these closed, and when are they closed? Well, it's not closed for division, um, because again, you could have taken 1 and divided it by 3, as an example, and get a decimal. It's a fraction, and you can't reduce it as a whole number, so it's not closed under division. And multiplication, though, is interesting here, because no matter what we multiply, any two odds will give you an odd product. Part of the reason for this is, if you think about it, um, you need a factor of 2 to make an even number, and no odd number has a factor of 2. So you'll never create an even value, right? An odd multiplied by an odd is another odd, right? We never introduce the factor of 2, thus we can never create an odd product. So it is closed under multiplication, but it is not closed under subtraction, right? Or addition, here's why. If we take two odd numbers, like 3 plus 3, we get an even value, right? That's, that relates to the idea that if you have a group of 3 and a group of 3, and you have two groups of 3, you're doubling an odd group. In other words, right, you have, you're introducing a factor of 2. I mean, you're taking 2 times 3, essentially, by doubling an odd value. There, once you introduce that factor of 2, you get an even result. So it's kind of, I mean, in a sense, you can think of any addition of an even amount of odd groups, like 3 plus 3, or 4 threes, or 6 threes, or whatever, you're introducing 2 as a factor. Subtraction has a similar idea, um, because if you take 3 minus 3, you get 0, which is also an even, right? 0 is even, of course. So odd integers are closed under one operation, and that's multiplication. So I'll write that here. But what about even integers? Um, what happens there with, right, of course, 0 and 2 and negative 2 and so forth, right, because integers are, in both cases, are positive or negative whole numbers. When is this close? Well, it's close for addition, right, if you add an even plus an even, what do you get? Well, you get another even number. You're taking two groups or an even amount of groups of even values. Um, and if you took an odd amount of even values, it wouldn't matter. You still get an even. You sum them up. And the same is, same is true for subtraction, and even minus an even. So you can test these out. Like, for example, 2 plus 4 is 6, right? In any order, 4 minus 2 is 2. You're getting even results. It's close for addition, close for subtraction. It's close for multiplication as well, right? If you multiply any two even numbers, like let's say you multiply 4 times 6, you get another even result, positive or negative. But I'll uncircle that. So far, I've only been circling examples when it's not closed. And the last thing here is division. It's not closed for division because if you take 2, for example, and divide it by 4, right? 2 over 4, you get again that fraction, oops, 1, one half, which is 0.5. So it's not closed for division. However, it is closed for addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So that's the most so far. Next, we have our prime numbers. The prime numbers, remember, does not include the number 1. Uh, a prime number essentially is a number with exactly two factors, two different factors, and that could be like, for example, 3. 3 is prime. So the two factors are 1 and 3. And those are two different factors. 1 only has one factor, right, itself. So that, that might be an easy way for you to reason through it. When are prime numbers closed? Well, if you add two prime numbers, let's add 2 plus 3, here you get 5, another prime, keep going. Say we had 5 and 7. Well, then we get 12, and 12 is not prime. So it's not closed under addition. And you can imagine the same um, thing happening with subtraction. For example, if I take 13, a prime number, and subtract um, 2, no, let's say, sorry, subtract 3, better example, we get 10, which is not prime. And for division, of course, um, if we take any, like 2 and divide by any other prime number, uh, we get what? Well, we get um, decimal, right? 2 divided by 5, for example, is 0.4. So it's not closed for division. And multiplication is not closed as well. But the, the, the thing here is to think, why is it not closed for multiplication? Even without doing 
any actual calculations. I mean, we could, for example, 3 times 3 is 9, right? That's non-prime. But you should think that, well, this is not closed, and that makes sense, right? I can think that, oh, a prime multiplied by another prime must lead to a non-prime. Why? Well, if you step back and think about it, this new number you just created, you took these two numbers, these two primes, and multiplied them. So you took two prime numbers, you multiplied them, and that means that those original prime numbers are now factors of the new number. For example, 3 and 3 are factors of 9, right? That means that you've already given 9 another factor other than 1 in itself, because that's how you made the number. And it's beautiful to keep playing at this because you can really break down all numbers into products of primes. Um, that's really all numbers are, right, in many senses. So, so anyway, this is not closed as well for any. But don't miss that, that, that important, that key idea of how to analyze the product of primes without actually doing any arithmetic. All right, thanks.